Hello everyone, so I am back with more of my perfection run in Stardew Valley. Last time we set some goals, achieved a few, and failed a few, but I am looking forward to another 100 days to hopefully get that much closer to reach perfection for the very first time. As you might suspect, there's a lot to accomplish in this video, and yeah, I'm not too confident we'll get everything like the golden clock, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the 100 day video first. This will all make so much more sense. The major goals this time around are to get as close to perfection as possible, but as it turns out, some cooking recipes are impossible during this time frame because they're unlocked after 200 days, but 99% is possible, so I'm going for it. Here are the goals on my list for this 200 day challenge. Several of these I have never done before, and that also means a lot of these are Steam achievements that I do not have. Number one, I would like to reach maximum friendship with everyone in the town, including the marriage candidates. Number two, I still have to reach floor 100 in the school caverns. Number three, I need to do a few odds and ends like shipping, crafting, and cooking everything, minus those three cooking recipes I mentioned earlier. Number four, I still have to open the walnut room and find all 130 golden walnuts on Ginger Island. Number five, I want to open the new mastery door introduced in patch 1.6 and reach maximum mastery. I have three out of five skills maxed at the moment. Number six, finish the monster slayer goals. Number seven, finish the museum collection to retrieve the last star drop. Number eight, complete the missing bundle. And finally, actually decorate my farm because it's ugly as fuck. As I'm sure you can imagine, this video took me months to record and edit, but every day is packed full with stuff to complete this goal. Lots to look forward to, so let's just jump right on in where we left off. Off, shall we? Starting off strong on day 101, I add some normal quality star fruits to the seed maker and harvest everything I can in the greenhouse while also planting the star fruit seeds. The wizard gets a void essence for his birthday, and I drop off an iron bar at Clint's to finish the request he sent me this morning in the mail. After that, I take a trip to the mines to work on gathering fiber needed for five flute blocks. I need 100 fiber, so I revisit floor 80 and 85 over and over to get all 100 by 130. Then I go home, craft the flute blocks, and take a trip to Ginger Island. It's raining when I arrive, so I immediately get to work on the mermaid puzzle and receive five golden walnuts for my hard work. I had to watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to do this, by the way, and it took me longer than I cared to admit. Placed some quality sprinklers for a few crops, planted some parsnips, and returned to Pelican Town to hang out at the last night of the night market. I mostly came here for wheat seeds for the Ginger Island Gorman quest. After that, I did some fishing at the submarine and safely teleported back home, cutting it close before 2 a.m. It's a bad luck day, so I don't prepare to visit the Skull Caverns just yet, and I check my mail to see that Maru is my Feast of the Winter Star gift recipient. She's basically lowest on the relationship panel, so that should help, right? I catch the cave jelly and the river jelly early in the day for the fish smoker recipe that I'll purchase soon. One of the many regrets about my 100 day video is that I didn't purchase the fish smoker recipe and use it sooner. I made a video covering how much gold you can earn in your first spring using the fish smoker on Riverland versus ranching and growing crops on Meadowlands. I'll have that video listed below in the description just in case you're interested in checking it out. Then I visit Ginger Island to start catching discus in the river for the tropical fish quest from Willy. I'm really all over the place today since there's so much to check off the list. I finished the gym bird puzzle that night for five golden walnuts and I catch five lionfish at the beach for the tropical fish request, but no ocean jelly for the fish smoker, unfortunately. On day 103, I wake up on Ginger Island and get the whack-a-mole golden walnut and the last golden walnut needed from the mussel nodes at the beach. I unlock the dig site with 10 golden walnuts and rescue Professor Snell from a doomed life eating mushrooms and I quickly clear the dig site area. After Professor Snell sets up his booth, I turn in the mummified bat, the mummified frog, and finish the two survey questions for four easy golden walnuts. There are a few easy golden walnuts to get above the dig site as well. I ask the birds above the beach house to build a teleportation device by way of parrot and I use it to quickly reach the pirate cove where I rush over to get five stingrays for the tropical fish request. Day 104, I start my day by grumpily moving my furniture around after Robin wrecked it, then I'm off to Clint's to open a few geodes. The collections tab says I need 8 minerals and 10 artifacts. That's not too bad, but I'm going to need a lot of omni geodes and some artifact troves to finally finish this. I visit Clint again and drop off my pickaxe for the gold upgrade. I tried to do this on the last day of the 100 day challenge, but he was at the clinic. Then I take the cart to the mountains and ask Robin to build a new shed for me since I don't have one yet and there are a lot of kegs in our future. It's Granny Evelyn's birthday, so I visit the Milner house to give her something nice, even though she's already at Max Hearts. And I also help George get something from the bookshelf. I visit Sandy at the Oasis and purchase 30 star fruit to take home and plant in the greenhouse with Deluxe Speed Grow. I still need one more Iridium Sprinkler to fix the greenhouse layout. Please don't yell at me. I know it's a mess. I finally catch the stupid sea jelly at the beach and on my way back home, I exchange a prize ticket for a pomegranate sapling. 
On day 105, the queen of sauce taught me how to make pumpkin pie, after pumpkin season, I guess. I checked the mail to see that Robin sent me a letter for hardwood. She's right over there making my new shed, so I hand it over. Then I go to the beach to finally purchase the fish smoker crafting recipe for 10,000 gold. I don't start using it immediately though. Instead, I break open a few artifact troves and turn a few things into the museum. I grabbed the secret price ticket hidden behind the bookseller shop that I exchanged for the Friendship 101 book. The Friendship 101 book helps to build relationships a little bit faster, which should help us reach the first goal much more quickly. Back at the farm, I start throwing in some fish I saved into the fish smoker, the legendary fish, and some night market fish. While those are working, I clean up the farm a tiny bit and make it look a little bit nicer. I don't start putting down any pads because I don't know what I want it to look like yet and I didn't sell any of the smoked fish today. I'm saving it for a satisfying money's haul for tomorrow night. The next day is a good luck day and I am fully prepared to visit the Skull Cavern. I grab all of my bombs, some food for buffs, and some staircases. Before I leave, I take a smoked fish to the raccoon and finish his quest though. Then I get the golden pickaxe from Clint and teleport over using a desert totem. I didn't find a single treasure room unfortunately and I also took all of my stone with me to make staircases which ended up saving me because every time I got to 100 stone, I crafted more, and I ran into a few infested floors that I didn't want to deal with. I skipped from floor 89 to 93 and 93 to 100 to make it to floor 100 in the Skull Caverns around 10.30 p.m. Not bad considering I left the farm a little bit late. Mr. Key ridiculed me just a tiny bit for cheating by using staircases, but then praised me for all the stone I had gathered. He offered me some questionable looking snake milk that I drank, no questions asked, and it increased my hit points permanently by 25. What a nice guy. Since I still had some time left, I kept going and I'm really glad I did because I made it to floor 106 with 70 iridium total before using a farm total to get back home. I immediately tossed them into the furnace and opened the secret notes I found before crashing into my comfy bed. I somehow still didn't max combat to level 10, but I must be really, really close. Since my pickaxe is strong enough now, I finally break the meteorite next to the greenhouse that fell all the way back in summer, I think, for even more iridium that's stacked onto the furnace pile. I visit Sandy at the Oasis shop to purchase more starfruit seeds, grab the strange doll since I found the note for that sometime back a while ago, a rabbit's foot next to the abandoned Jojo Mart got me the special charm, then Leah got a salad for her birthday because I wasn't willing to part with goat cheese or wine. That night I made 72,719 gold, 68,346 gold was from the smoked fish alone. Not as much as I was hoping it would be, but was still a lot and I was pretty happy about it, putting me at 645,000 gold total in this playthrough. Day 108 was a good luck day, so I decided on a whim to use the monster musk at the Skull Caverns to try and get to combat level 10 in the mines. I of course chose the brute profession for that sweet 15% damage boost, but since I got home so late, I forgot to set out cookies for Santa. Upon waking on day 109, I got a new notification, you sense a way is open. I'm assuming that means the elusive mastery door is now open. I've spent a very small amount of time looking into this new mastery door, but I'll check it out today if there's time after the festival. You all are going to be so proud of me though, I actually finally placed some paths down in front of the farmhouse right before the festival started and it looks so nice. At the Winter Star Festival, I gave Maru a loved gift, a diamond, and she responded with, Ah, a diamond. Thanks. Yo, what the fuck? And then Marnie gave me 12 normal quality eggs. The worst Christmas ever. After the festival, I visited the master room and it looks like grandpa has left me even more secrets. There's a pedestal in the middle of the room with an experience bar and I'm assuming I have to keep using tools until this fills up and maybe then I can unlock one of these cool masteries on the door. I'm definitely leaning towards farming or mining first. Gus wants a last minute albacore, so I make a mental note to catch one for him. I moved around some buildings on my farm a little bit to make it look a little bit better, and I stopped by Clint's to give him a birthday present. But I think Clint is off at Ginger Island on his birthday. Good for him, but I'm not chasing him all the way over there to deliver his gift. I actually think about it as I'm walking to the beach, then decide to work on the biome balance special request instead. I fished up an albacore for Gus, but not before seeing that Demetrius, Leah, and Pierre were at Ginger Island together. So I guess Clint was just chilling at the community center. I visit him at the Star Drop Saloon and give him an aquamarine as a birthday gift. Day 111, I checked the mail to see that Demetrius sent me the farm computer crafting recipe for completing the biome balance request. I had to look up what this does because I've never had it before. Pretty neat, but I'll craft it some other time. I made time to pick up the golden axe from Clint before going to Ginger Island to gather all five golden walnuts from crop harvesting, and I decided to bring some of the quality sprinklers back home with me since I'd like to place a few in front of the farmhouse for spring. 
Before I leave, I check the walnut room. 81 out of 100. Day 112 is the last day of winter, and tomorrow begins a brand new year on Cowpie Farm. I'm really, really excited about that, and it means a chance to redeem myself with the strawberries. I definitely will not screw it up again this time. I have barely enough gold to upgrade the farmhouse to casks, but I also know that I want to buy more seeds, so I upgrade my house anyway. I wanted to upgrade my hoe to copper instead, but I'll need that for tomorrow anyway. While I'm at Robin's, I forget to move the buildings that I wanted to move. I wanted to move the barn today, but since I didn't do that first, it's just stuck like this until the cask room is finished. I got to bed before midnight to avoid a stamina penalty, and that night Abigail asked if I want to adopt a baby, and I said yes. Even after upgrading to the cask room, it looks like I made enough gold to afford a few seeds tomorrow morning. Day 113, it's finally my chance to redeem myself for spring last year. New guy Kent introduces himself bright and early and probably judges me for having a Santa hat on. My farm looks like a damn mess, so I tidied it up as best I can, tend to my animals, and visit the general store. I pick up the garlic seeds for Ginger Island, potato seeds for the cow pie farm, and some fertilizer. I drop off the hoe for the copper upgrade, and instead of going home to plant everything I purchased, I started knocking out Birdie's quest. Gus isn't at his saloon, of course, he's away at Ginger Island, so I quickly give him a visit to hand over the gourmet tomato salt and grab the tropical curry recipe since I don't have the patience to find him here again. Since I'm already here, I talk to the gourmet frog and get 10 golden walnuts from planting wheat and melons in the fields, just 9 more until I can open the walnut room. I also plant the garlic seeds I bought earlier in the morning from Pierre. Sandy receives the desert rose in exchange for the TV remote, George gets the TV remote, and I hand over the arctic shard to the wizard. He shoes me away but not before giving me a wriggling worm for my troubles. No wonder this guy is divorced. I check the Star Drop Saloon for Willie, but instead I get a cutscene with Clint, who complains about being single. Again. Listen, buddy, I know you asked me to give that amethyst or whatever to Emily ages ago, but I have been so busy. I watch him blunder his way through a conversation with Emily, and I wonder to myself if I am that awkward IRL. The answer is probably yes. I find Willie at the docks, and I finally hand over the wriggling worm from the wizard. All that's left is to give the pirate's locket to Birdie. I fill my fields with potato seeds, and I call it a night. Day 114 is mostly uneventful. I visit the oasis again, and I know I was just here yesterday, but I forgot to buy more starfruit seeds. Not like I could have afforded them yesterday, and I purchased a few for the greenhouse. Back in Pelican Town, I visit the mines, and then I take a look at the Monster Slayer progress. I don't cringe as hard as I thought I was going to. It's still pretty bad, though. But I've actually completed two without even paying attention to it at all. On day 115, I pick up the copper hoe from Clint, and I open a few geodes I found in the mines yesterday, including a few artifact troves I found at dig spots. A few items got donated to the museum, and I got a magic rock candy. Robin finished the cask room in the basement, so I moved a few buildings again. I can never get the silo placement right, and I put the silo on top of my goat who completely glitched out and doesn't move. I stare in horror as my own goat is stuck underneath the silo. <laughs> <laughs> but then I learned all animals can unglitch themselves at 5 p.m., so it's all fine. I remembered to remove the Santa hat before bedtime, and I got a cutscene for the abandoned Jojo Mart building. I've actually been super prepared for the missing bundle for a while now, so I drop off a gold quality void salmon, prismatic shard, and a dinosaur mayonnaise to the missing bundle. Once I have enough gold quality ancient fruit seeds, I'll donate those and the silver wine to finish it. On Ginger Island, I bring the pirate locket with me, but Birdie isn't outside on rainy days, so I ask the gourmet frog to take a look at the garlic growing in my crop fields and he gives me the remaining five golden walnuts, finishing the quest. I only need four golden walnuts to open the walnut room now. I exchange five golden walnuts to open the mailbox next to the beach house, and I use ten to open the island trader. I check the dig site for new spots to dig, and I found a snake vertebrae for Professor Snell, but I'll need a few more pieces to complete the snake collection. I quickly handed over the pirate's locket to Birdie on day 117, and I enter the walnut room for the very first time. I've never stepped foot in here, so I'm not sure what to expect. Mr. Key greets me, and I looked at the key gem trade machine to see what the options were. I have no clue what most of the stuff is or where to begin. Not sure what the key to the town does if the shops are closed or what the purpose is. The galaxy soul is pretty cool, and I've obviously never had an infinity weapon, so I'd love to go for that sometime. It looks like the special bluegrass crafting recipe is here, but it needs a mystic syrup, so I'm curious what that is. This means I can have bluegrass on other farming layouts too, and I really want to play on the standard map again. The perfection tracker says I'm at 37%, and I look at the key gem quest board. I can either beat up some super strong monsters in the mines and reach the bottom, again, or find four prismatic shards. I think I'll take my luck with the mines for 50 key gems. After my visit with Mr. Key, I decide to go back to Pelican Town, and Abigail threatens me about the egg festival as soon as I step off the boat. Then I look for the secret alleyway buffet book behind Clint's shop. Luck isn't on my side today, but I visit the mines anyway, and it wasn't actually that hard. I only got to floor 10 though, and there are some cute new slimes that look like Mr. Key. 
I placed a few lightning rods to prepare for a thunderstorm tomorrow. This means I can finally fix the greenhouse. Got mail from someone called Fizz that works for Joja. Definitely sus. Visited the mines and only made it to floor 35 on the second day, but I got some really cool stuff like radioactive ore. Day 119 is the last day of Mr. Key's challenge, and I just don't see how it's possible to get from floor 35 to floor 100, but since it's a good luck day, I visit the volcano mines instead. I found journal scrap number 10 in the mines, and I accidentally warped back to the farm using a farm totem completely on accident. I swear I blacked out and I didn't mean to at all because I had actually planned to stay the night on Ginger Island to visit the pirates the next day. Oh well. On day 120, there's a battery pack in my fields for a brand new iridium sprinkler. I take the new iridium sprinkler to the greenhouse and dig up two quality sprinklers and knock down a few cranberries and one ancient seed plant to get everything set up correctly. There are different ways to set up the greenhouse. Some layouts use six iridium sprinklers and some use eight. Using eight doesn't take up more space and it looks more symmetrical so I commit to 8. I will admit to you though I had to restart the day three times to fix it properly. Please don't judge me. I feel like this is allowed considering how often I keep messing this up. Afterwards I visit the oasis to purchase starfruit seeds and take a trip to Ginger Island to dig up the ostrich egg. Another item I've never had before and I look at the wiki to see Professor Snell will give me an incubator if I can complete the collection. Fizz tries to bribe me into purchasing perfection waivers and I tell him to shove off. Then a bit later I visit the pirate's den to receive the three golden walnuts at the darts table. The farm obelisk at the beach house is unlocked with 20 golden walnuts and then I accidentally use it to go home. It's okay though because there are a few chores to do like collecting the eggs in the coop and wine from the kegs. The next day Robin gets a purple mushroom for a request and I get another prize ticket that I exchange for the sports cap. Picked up the steel pan before heading over to Ginger Island and I visit the volcano again hoping to find more golden walnuts. I find a golden walnut for mining, two for monster drops, and another for my chest. I nearly missed a notification that said you reached a new level of understanding after killing a fire spirit in the mines. It was getting really late so I used the farm totem to go back home on purpose this time. Visited the mastery room on day 122 and after a lot of consideration and several minutes with the game paused, I pulled the trigger to get the farming mastery first. The golden animal cracker and the statue of blessing sounds too good to pass up, although the fishing and mining masteries are definitely on my list next. Encounter Clint struggling to talk to Emily again. I'm not sure I even feel bad for him at this point. Emily is such a nice girl and Clint is just impossible. Afterwards, I take the plunge and hand my pickaxe over to Clint for the iridium upgrade. Then I visit Ginger Island to grab another key gem quest. I am so sick and tired of the constant back and forth to get here by the way, but I choose the extended family quest and it says there are new legendary fish to catch. Before leaving the island, I exchanged five of my dragon teeth for a banana sapling. I'm kind of regretting not getting the fishing mastery, but I also didn't know that this was a request at the walnut room. I find my first golden animal cracker from fishing and I try to catch the legend two and I fail, epically. This thing is no joke. I waste so much time on it, I don't catch any of the legendary fish today. Lucky the dinosaur gets the first golden animal cracker. Double dinosaur mayonnaise should be pretty nice. Krobus has the wizard catalog available and I want it so bad. Today is the final day to finish the extended family quest, so I catch the Glacier Fish Jr. and Son of Crimson Fish for 20 key gems. I'm surprised the Glacier Fish is even more difficult than the Legend, and I am definitely choosing the Fisher Mastery to make this a bit easier for next time. I made a few smoked fish for lots of monies, 87,000 gold, and I wish I had caught more Legend 2s, but it was just so hard to catch, and I'm just not sure that throwing them into the bait maker would have been worth it. The next day is the Egg Festival, and I plan to really redeem myself for failing so hard last year on Strawberry Seeds. In fact, fact, I go a bit overboard and purchase 128 strawberry seeds to really show my dedication. Then I of course beat Abigail at the egg hunt again. The prize wasn't as cool this year though and I only got a prize ticket, but it was fun seeing everyone participate this year and I noticed the eggs were in a different spot this time. After the egg festival, I checked the mastery room and chose to go with the fishing mastery as my second level unlock. This means I have a new fishing rod that can equip two bobbers and I get a few more perks like golden fishing chests and a new fishing bait. On day 126 was another notification in my mailbox for the new Calico Desert Festival starting tomorrow. It's a new 1.6 festival that I have yet to see because the desert wasn't unlocked yet last year in spring. The golden animal cracker is really already pulling its weight and I toss two dinosaur eggs into the mayonnaise machines and take a stroll around the farm. The strawberry field is really coming together nicely. Since it's a good luck day, I use a monster must to work harder towards the monster slayer goals and that night Abigail and I reach a notification about adopting a baby girl. I named her Eloise. I made 31,000 gold mostly from starfruit and I am very, very close to 1 million, 9,000 gold away in fact. 
It's the first day of the Calico Desert Festival, so I rushed through morning chores to make it there early, which was really dumb because some of the shops don't open that early. But there's so much to do. The traveling merchant is here, there are villager booths, challenges, free food. I talk to everyone I can and decide to accept Willie's fishing challenge, then I realized I didn't bring my fishing pole for his minigame. I receive a few Calico eggs from the Skull Cavern challenge and a prismatic shard. Not too bad for the first day of the festival, I think. But I don't end up buying anything because I thought that things were just way too expensive and I didn't have enough calico eggs saved up yet. Okay, today's the day. I finally reached 1 million gold, everyone. The achievement popped up when I woke up in the morning, and it's too bad I can't spend all of my money on the catalogs. I'm really, really tempted, but I know I should probably save it for the obelisks. I did a lot of chores around the farm, like taking care of the chickens, the greenhouse, and the barn house. Then I visited the Calico Desert to see what was going on at the festival. Every time Gil gives me coffee as a reward, I just walk it over to Harvey. On the last day of the Calico Festival, Marnie asked me if I would ever drink salty camel milk. I said no. Day 130, I finished Pam's special board request for, um, potato juice, and I got a dehydrator from the ticket machine. I also got a book of mysteries from the mystery boxes, giving me a higher chance to find the mystery boxes, and I donated another mineral to the museum. Only one more mineral and one more artifact to go, calcite and the prehistoric skull. Also donated a silver wine to the missing bundle. All I need now is a few more gold quality ancient fruit. The next few days were pretty uneventful. I harvested strawberries, helped Willie with his crabs, reached floor 64 in the skull caverns, failing Mr. Key's quest, and finished another raccoon quest at the large tree stump. I finally replaced a few cranberries in the greenhouse with starfruit seeds. I'm sorry for making you watch that. The horse shed was finished a while ago and I finally named my horse Acorn. I also picked up another key quest. I have to give 50 loved items in seven days. Easy. I woke up bright and early on day 135 and finished my morning chores then got to work handing out gifts. I gave strawberries to Demetrius and Mario, diamonds for the ladies at Caroline's exercise classes, except for Robin who really loves spaghetti, and I got the popular achievement for having five heart friendships with 20 people. I was at 15 gifts for my first day and it was getting pretty late but I still had a few gifts to hand out, but everyone had locked their doors already, so now I understand why people like having key to the town. It would have made this quest a lot easier. On the day of the Flower Dance Festival, I harvested harvested all of my strawberries and did my chores before going to town to hand out gifts, but I discover all of the doors are locked on holidays, and I once again understand why people get the key to the town exchange for key gems. At the festival, when I asked Abigail if she would dance with me, she said she wanted to dance with someone else, and then she joked about it. Maybe it's because I forgot to take off my dumb spinny hat, and I guess I don't blame her. I wouldn't want to be seen dancing with me either. <laughs> I resume gift giving on day 137, and I'm actually really glad I picked this key gem quest up because it's really encouraging me to get everyone's friendship to Max now. After chores, I resumed gift giving once again and I saw a lot of cutscenes today. I watched two cutscenes with Leah back to back and a cutscene with Alex and Sebastian. I also went all the way to Ginger Island to give Pierre his stupid birthday gift. Day 139, you guessed it, more gifts. I got even more cutscenes today, one with Pierre at the general store. I don't want to know what secret stash means unless it's money, then why did I give it back and how did I even know it was there? I had two cutscenes with Sebastian. After finishing the cutscene, I was finally able to give Sebastian a frozen tear as a gift and I finished the key quest with two days remaining. I also planted the mango tree in the greenhouse today, picked up the silver hoe at Clint's and opened a golden coconut to get a banana sapling even though we already have one in the greenhouse. Day 140 is the last day of spring. My crop fields are already set up for the blueberries next season so I did a few small things like opening all of the Omni Geos and golden coconuts I had been hoarding. I only need one more artifact to finish the museum, the prehistoric skull, which means there will be several days ahead of grinding in the abandoned mines. I used the carts to go to the quarry and into the abandoned mines hoping to find the prehistoric skull. There are a lot of enemies, but unfortunately, I didn't find what I was looking for. Day 141 is the first day of summer. That means a lot of star fruit. Still no prehistoric skull. Finished the large animal collection, fully completing the dig site, and I even got the ostrich incubator crafting recipe. I finished the missing bundle tonight. Goodbye, little Junimo. I'll miss you. And yes, before you ask, I did forget about the crop field, so I was rushing to fill everything in before 2 a.m. before realizing I didn't even have enough seeds. Typical. <laughs> Next day, I purchased 175 bags of star fruit seeds. That's 70,000 gold dropped on star fruit. I also purchased 64 Deluxe Speed Grow from Pierre's bringing today's total to 78,400 gold. Yikes. I know I'll make the money back pretty easily, but yikes. I crafted the ostrich egg incubator and I grabbed the ostrich egg I had saved in my chests. Have you ever accidentally sold it? I don't think you can ever get another one. That would really suck. I was a little confused at first because I couldn't place it in my coop, but then I realized it was a barn animal. On day 143, my cask room had silver quality wine, which is almost enough to make all of the money back that I spent on starfruit seeds and fertilizer yesterday. 
Then I take another trip to the abandoned mines. If you all are wondering, the skull enemies here have a 1.3% drop rate for the prehistoric skull, while the bone nodes at Ginger Island have a 0.8% drop rate. It's not looking too good, honestly. Day 144, no skull. I used the monster must before entering the spooky caves and I finally got the prehistoric skull. I noped out of there so fucking fast too. I turned it in and got my final star fruit. Woohoo! I got the Mystery of the Star Drop Steam achievement for finding every star drop in the game, and I also got the achievement on Steam too, which felt really, really nice. Even though I went hunting in the mines again, I didn't find enough bat wings to make more monster musk for more monster slaying today, which means we'll have to keep coming back. Also, I may have found a glitch by getting that last star drop. I noticed my energy bar wasn't going down at all, and I was really confused. I'm still not sure why that was happening. I checked on the walnut room, and I traded for the key to the town and the heavy tapper crafting recipe for more oak resin. I really need to craft more kegs, and I also picked up the extended family quest again, 50% completion. I caught the crimson fish and Miss Angler today pretty easily and saved everything for the fish smoker. Saw a very heartwarming cutscene with Gus and purchased a movie ticket for the very first time. I wanted to take Abigail with me, so I ran all the way back home to give her the ticket, but I couldn't figure out how to get the event to start. Little did I know I left her standing there alone for hours probably. I actually checked the theater again and it closed at 9 p.m. Whoops. <laughs> Before bedtime, I crafted one heavy tapper for the oak tree next to the greenhouse, and I unfortunately can't craft more than that because I only have one radioactive bar and not enough ore to smelt more. Day 147, caught some legends and went to the movie theater for the first time. I accidentally stood up my wife at the theater last night and I went by myself the next night, I guess. <laughs> I got the two thumbs up steam achievement for watching a movie at the theater and I'm not sure what to do about the guy hogging the ticket booth. Finished the extended family quest on day 148 and made 80,000 mostly from selling the smoked fish. I also accidentally gave Jody a large mouth bass because I was an hour late to the quest from last year. Sorry, Jody. Day 149, the ostrich hatch and it needs a name. How the f does that take less time than a dinosaur egg? Opened a lot of mystery boxes and got a rock candy. Also accidentally drunk my void mayonnaise that I was hoping to save for Krobus. Summer 10 is day 150, just 50 more to go. There's still so much left to mark off the list and I can already tell I'll be working past 200 days to reach perfection. Raise your hand in the comments if you're interested in watching that video. Leah brought a sculpture to me as a gift this morning and I tossed it into the house like every other gift I've ever received. I harvested more star fruit and crafted more kegs since I never seem to have enough. Definitely picking up more Mr. Key's mining quests for more radioactive ore when I have the chance. Visited the clinic to see if Mara was there for her birthday gift. She wasn't, but Harvey was there to give me my first check up after living in Pelican Town for 150 days. No wonder he's going out of business. Afterwards, he says, I'd like to get to know you, Mooney. Put aside our doctor-patient relationship. Oh, is that how he gets new clients? Crafted more monster musk from the bat wings I gathered today and crafted an oil maker to create truffle oil just so I can mark it off the shipping list. Before anyone says anything, yes, I realize my mistake. I really should have invested in pigs and truffle oil so much sooner. Day 151 is the Luau Festival. Last year, I completely messed it up and the Gorman was pretty upset with me, but this year will be different. While completing my chores, I reached a new level of understanding by harvesting more of the star fruit in my crop fields. I absolutely forgot to save a good quality cauliflower from spring, so I put a normal quality star fruit into the pot instead. The gourmet liked it, and I also noticed there was a star fruit at Pierre's table for 3,000 gold. Started on my oak tree farm after the festival. Day 152, I worked on my oak tree farm, completed more morning chores, and visited the bookseller to trade in a lot of books I had been hoarding. I traded Jack B. Nimble for three stuffings, sold Jewels of the Sea for 800, and Monster Compendium for 2,000 gold. I also purchased the price catalog because it was only 3,000 gold. I have to purchase all of the books eventually since they show up in the powers tab, but decided not to today. I clearly don't have enough funds. I visited Ginger Island again to look at key quests and picked up the Skull Cavern quest. I don't actually think I can clear it, I'm mostly doing it for the radioactive nodes. Day 153, the spirits were very happy today, so I went to the Skull Caverns a little after 10 a.m. I got a curiosity lure from a mummy, and side note, I really, really do not like the eels in the Skull Cavern, they're very rude. I only reached 432 and nearly died a few times, but I got 14 radioactive ore, one prizzy, and only 16 iridium, but that's okay because it's three bars. I tossed the radioactive ores into the smelter as soon as I get home. Two of my star fruits were destroyed during the thunderstorm yesterday, so I made more lightning rods, and by 3 p.m., I was finally done with chores, but it wasn't feeling great about it. I decided to go to the Skull Caverns anyway and didn't find any radioactive ore, so it felt like a waste of time, but I got another animal cracker and a fair bit of EXP on the mystery bar. During the night, a strange sound was heard, so was that a UFO or the owl statue again? 
Can't wait to find out in the morning. On day 155, I checked the mail and Kent wants a starfruit for Jody. Good thing I've planted literally hundreds of them. While I was going through the chests on my farm, I realized I had four stacks of 999 stone. Maybe I should have used some staircases when exploring the school caverns, but I guess I just overlooked it. I remember to turn off pregnancy for cows and after tending to all the farm animals, I saw the alien incubator thing on my farm. Reddit said eventually it will hatch and escape and nothing happens, it's just a rare event. Reddit suggests I leave it alone, and since Reddit is always right, I do. Gave Kent the starfruit for Jody and visited Ginger Island again, donated one banana to finish the banana puzzle. For some reason, I thought I had to donate three, but I only needed to donate one. The only golden walnuts remaining are the ones found in the volcano mines. So I visited the volcano mines and finally restored the bridge for five golden walnuts because I keep forgetting my watering can and I made it to floor two and I couldn't go any further because I needed the watering can. Again, what a mess. I cleared every rock and enemy I could find. I didn't find any golden walnuts, unfortunately. Decided to stay the night on Ginger Island though. On day 156, I accepted the Skull Cavern key quest again and I thought it was cool that I had six days, but then I read the fine print after I accepted it that said I can't eat or drink anything. Lamau. Went back home to do chores and my ostrich grew up. One normal quality ostrich egg is 600 gold, holy crap, and I got two of them, but I put one in the incubator because duh. I crafted more milk machines and got a gold quality rabbit foot from Barley that I decided to save as a gift. Crafted a few more kegs and gave the animal cracker to my OG, Daisy, and at 8pm I stood staring at the chest in my house wondering what I should be doing at 8pm. Then I stood staring at the collections tab and shipped a few things I was missing. I need a lot of fruit trees to fill this out more. Then I panicked because I thought I messed up caviar, but since 1.6 introduced fishing up row, I might be okay. And the alien incubator is still incubating, by the way, in case anyone was curious. Visited the master room on day 157 and was stuck between choosing foraging or mining. I chose mining even though the golden mystery boxes have a 0.5% chance of opening an auto petter. Would rather have an auto grabber. Statue of the Dwarf King needs 20 iridium bars, which I technically have, but I know a lot of the obelisks require at least 10 iridium bars, so like any good gamer, I decide to wait and hoard them. Brought the bait maker to the lake and caught sturgeon until I found a chest with sturgeon row, then tossed it into a preserves jar to make caviar. Easy. Today is the green rain day and I spend all day gathering weeds and moss for the blessing statue. At the end of the day, I need 110 sap, so I get 6 sap per tree, so that's like 20 trees. We'll get the statue tomorrow after chores, I bet. On day 159, I hatched another baby lizard and I named it Sarah. I cut down a ton of trees, placed more kegs, bought 120 seeds of star fruit, and replaced a few in the fields, then crafted the statue of blessings. I purchased apple, peach, apricot, cherry, and orange saplings from Pierre, then stood outside of Jody's house with a large mouth bass because I am tired of sitting with it in my quest log, and I'm pretty sure there's a unique dialogue option with Kent being here. On day 160, I watch a cutscene with Alex at the beach and catch a puffer fish early in the morning for Demetrius, then I go back home and sell a lot of silver and gold quality starfruit. Of course, I had to make a trip to purchase more starfruit seeds and I crafted a few more kegs, and it's still not enough. I placed the blessing statues down and got blessing of water to make fish easier to catch. I didn't really need that today, but I'm looking forward to other blessings. I stared at the greenhouse for a long time while trying to figure out where to put the fruit trees. Hint, I have too many damn kegs in here. I gave an animal cracker to the sheep and gave void mayonnaise to Krobus and visited Sam to give him a gift and got a fun cutscene instead. I handed out gifts at the saloon and accidentally crafted four bee houses when I meant to craft more kegs. Something I noticed while editing this video is I completely forgot to watch the Queen of Sauce channel today for the pink cake recipe, which means I had to dish out 50,000 gold for the book at the bookseller now. Great. I collected caviar from the preserves maker today and survived another day without fish ponds. I hate fish ponds and I refuse to use them. Ever. Convince me otherwise. In the greenhouse, I planted kale, rhubarb, and beet for the shipping list completion, but I still need artichoke seeds. I nearly purchased the Joja catalog at the Traveling Merchants booth, but decided not to and finally got around to dropping off the Silver Hoe at Clint's for the gold upgrade, and then I went to the mines to work on the Monster Slayer goals again. It was too late in the day to use Monster Must, so I just visited the mines instead of the Skull Caverns and I found three Earth Crystals for an obelisk and I need two more. There's a thunderstorm on day 162 and tomorrow, but it's a super good luck day, so I visited Ginger Island to see if there's another Skull Cavern quest first because I need more radioactive ore for more heavy tappers. I'm having a hard time keeping up with making kegs since I never have enough oak resin. I am at 52% completion by the way, and I forgot my stack of staircases. But it's okay because I finished three monster slayer goals, slimes, eels, and crabs right before leaving the skull cavern. Hatched an ostrich on day 163, named it Fitz. Visited the Adventurers Guild to look at monster slayer completion. I still need 15 void sprites, 32 skeletons, 21 duggies, 108 dust sprites, 54 mummies, 8 pepperexes, and 126 magma sprites. 
Go gave me the Slime Charmer ring, the Crab Shell ring, and the Napalm ring today. I gave Willy a pumpkin for his birthday on day 164. Day 165 is a super good luck day, so I planned a trip to the Skull Caverns and I brought my staircases this time. Started day 166 with 1 million gold, bought oil of garlic for Lewis's request, still have to craft it and throw it into the shipping bin though. Visited Ginger Island and got a cutscene with Leo, gave him a sea urchin as a birthday gift, then visited the volcano to look for the remaining 8 golden walnuts. Just kidding, I forgot my watering can again. I got 1 golden walnut on floor 2 before leaving though. I got my first mango on day 167 and it would have been significantly more helpful yesterday for Leo's birthday. This is a trash luck day, I hunted skeletons in the mines and finished the monster slayer goal. Day 168, looking forward to watching the dance of the Midnight Jellies tonight. Got the roasted hazelnut recipe from Queen of Sauce, and it will pain me and everyone watching to know that I didn't do math right, and a lot of my star fruit in my crop fields didn't grow today. I wasted 38,400 gold on those seeds, and they would have been ready by tomorrow. I'm too lazy to put down wheat seeds to secure a speed grow, so I visited Pelican Town instead and had a cutscene with Penny and the kids when visiting the traveling cart. Said goodbye to summer for the second time in this playthrough. I'm recording this at the end of August, and I am so pumped for fall. I am living my fall and pumpkin season dreams in Stardew right now during the first day of fall. I reached a new level of understanding for the mastery door today and decided to upgrade the shed so I can move all of the kegs into it. Lots of planting seeds and moving wine around and I made 94,000 gold that night. I noticed while doing chores on day 170 the um, alien thing got out. So that's great. Got rid of most of my coffee plants and replaced them with ancient fruit seeds. Sorry you had to deal with that. And gathered more wood and entered the mastery room and chose the foraging mastery because I need the mystic tree syrup stuff for the shipping list. Went home and crafted four mystic tree seeds and planted them with tree fertilizer. Day 171 was pretty hectic. Robin finished the big shed upgrade and I was able to craft nine more kegs before visiting Ginger Island. At the beach south of the farmhouse, I got a really heart-wrenching cutscene with Leo. I want to hug this poor kid. Discovered I actually have garlic in the chest on Ginger Island, so all hope is not lost to complete the shipping list before in 200 days. Decided to go back home and go to the mines to work on Key's deep exploration quest and made it to 420. When I looked at the summary that night, I had made 12,000 gold just from the ostrich egg mayonnaise alone. On day 172, I bought more pigs to start bringing in more truffle oil. I named them Snurt and Truffles. It's another good luck day though and I went to the mines immediately after chores to try and reach the bottom of Key's mine quests. How dare you put jumping spiders in Stardew Valley. In my panic state, a ghost barfed on me and I was too nauseated to eat anything. You have got to be kidding me. The rocks in this area aren't bunched up together either so it's kind of difficult to use bombs effectively and it's made even worse when spiders can literally jump on you from every direction to attack you. I passed out right next to to a staircase, but I made it to floor 56 from floor 20. I lost 15,000 gold. I didn't even know you could lose that much, but nothing of value. So I guess I'll just deal with it. Thankfully, I made 20,000 gold that night to make up for it. I realized I only have four espressos left on day 173 and I panicked a little bit. Just like real life, I need my caffeine fix. I got the blessing of the valley for the first time from the Statue of Blessings today. There aren't any butterflies in fall, so it should be a bit easier to spot, so I decided to look for it. I found Elliot and offered him crab cakes for his birthday, then found the prismatic butterfly in front of Robin's shop. I got a cash reward for something like 20,000 gold. I spent hours looking for the butterfly today, and I know the gold reward for finding it could be potentially higher on any given day, but it's not really worth spending time to look for it when there's already so much to do in a day right now, I think. I made it to floor 67 in Mr. Key's Mines and I crafted a few stacks of staircases for more exploring tomorrow. I think I can reach the bottom floor tomorrow if I try hard enough. On day 174, I completed a few chores and went to the mines again. I made it to floor 111 pretty easily since I crafted 12 or so staircases to get out of the forest area. It was also a bad luck day and pumpkin soup really helped a lot since I needed all of the luck I could get to find the staircases. I got a notification for completing another Monster Slayer Go on floor 96 and I had to leave early because I didn't have enough health restoring items, which is fine because I have one more day left to reach the bottom. Day 175 is an extra good luck day, so I might not even need all of the staircases I crafted to prepare for the last day, but I bring all of them anyway. I made it to the bottom pretty early in the day, around 10.30 a.m., and at the bottom I see a shrine that says, I've temporarily disabled the shrine, come back tomorrow. What does that mean? I also got the danger in the deep steam achievement. After reaching the bottom and finishing Mr. Key's quest, I visited Sandy to purchase more starfruit seeds and planted them in the greenhouse. I also picked up a rare seed of the traveling car and a cherry because it was really cheap and I tossed it into the shipping bin for progress towards completing the shipping list. 
I got a mystery hat and the book of mysteries and a lot more goodies from the golden mystery boxes that I have been hoarding for weeks now. I also watched a little UFO fly by in the money summary page tonight. I've never seen that before. Harvested the artichokes and the cranberries in my crop fields on day 176, then visited the shrine at the bottom of the mines and it asked if I wanted to allow even more powerful monsters. I said no, because I still need to finish the monster slayer goals. Found one golden walnut in the volcano mines after opening several crates and a few chests. Better than nothing, I guess? On day 177, I finally remembered to bring a few prismatic shards, cinder shards, and rubies with me to the forge at Ginger Island. I get the bottomless enchantment on the golden watering can, and I use a few prismatic shards to get the crusader enchantment on the galaxy sword. That will make the mummy monster slayer goal so much easier. I also use rubies on the galaxy sword to increase damage. I considered buying the remaining six golden walnuts, but I resisted again. I'm definitely going to purchase them in my next perfection playthrough because wow, is it tedious finding them all. I think I've mentioned this already, but the remaining golden walnuts are all from crates and chests in the mines and the drop rate just doesn't seem all that high. Or maybe I'm just getting really unlucky. Visited the walnut room and was surprised to see I have 105 key gems. I only need 15 more for all three of the galaxy souls so I decided to save them for later and I picked up an extended family quest for 20 key gems. If I can finish it I'll have enough for three galaxy souls. Teleported back home and had a lot of wine chores to catch up on. Should make a lot of monies tonight. I worked on the extended family quest for the rest of the day and caught Miss Angler but I didn't catch me Mutant Carp focused on extended family quests today and made Legend 2 bait to catch more and turn them into smoked fish. Or at least, that's what I want to say. Instead, I caught the glacier fish and the mutant carp pretty quickly, then stayed at the lake from early afternoon until midnight and never saw a legend 2 on my line. Day 179 was the last day to finish the extended family quest, so I focused on it and caught the legend 2. It was a pain in the ass and I had other stuff to take care of, so I only caught one. I gave Jody a gift to max out our friendship and I got the crimson fish too and finished the extended family quest for 20 key gems. I visited the cinder sap forest on day 180 to gather more hardwood and wood because I'm almost completely completely out of both. I made some garlic seeds for the oil of garlic crafting recipe and cooked some recipes in the kitchen as well. I sold the ones that I didn't really need for gifts and went to bed. Day 181 was a good luck day so I worked on Monster Slayer with Monster Musk after morning chores and I completed the dust sprite at 5pm and then went to floors 5 through 15 to finish the Dougie's Monster Slayer goal at around 10pm. All that's left with the Monster Slayer goals is mummies, pepper wrecks, and the magma sprites in the volcano mines. Had a super weird cutscene with Emily on day 182. I appeared in a super weird dream. Emily kind of creeps me out and I am so sorry to any Emily fans watching this. Gave Ginger Ale to Vincent and hunted for more clams. Visited Pierre's to finally purchase the furniture catalog and bought five bouquets. Afterwards, I went back home to empty my pockets, grab a monster musk, and zipped over to Calico Desert. The Crusader weapon enchantment is absolutely amazing by the way. And I completed the mummy monster hunter goal. Three more to go and I'll have the steam achievement too. Abigail asked if I wanted to adopt another baby that night. I said yes because I'm missing the achievements, so sure, why not? Tomorrow is the Stardew Valley Fair and since I won the competition last year, I haven't been saving anything for the display so I organized a few things for the range display tomorrow. It would still be cool to win it again a second time, plus bragging rights. After chores, I gave Sandy an iridium daffodil for her birthday and then I went into the skull cavern again with another monster musk and I finished the Pepper Rex Monster Slayer goal. All I need now is the Magma Sprites at the Volcano, which is great because maybe we can find the remaining six golden walnuts at the same time. I decided to go back home and break into people's homes and ask them to date me. I can search for more prismatic shards and treasure rooms some other time. Some of my mystic trees are fully grown, so I put a heavy tapper on one of them to gather mystic syrup later. I placed as many gold star and iridium items into the grand display as I could, but even if I lose, there isn't a whole lot at the booth that I care about buying aside from the prize ticket which I've been slacking on. It kind of sucks there aren't any better prizes in the second year. I won first place pretty easily with 99 points and I got exactly 1000 star tokens for the prize ticket at the booth. Nice. Day 185 is another super good luck day, so I zip over to the volcano mines after chores, hoping to find more golden walnuts. At 12.40 a.m., I still hadn't found any, so I leave, and I'm very depressed about it. On day 186, I visited the walnut room and exchanged key gems for the three galaxy souls. The infinity weapon also needs 60 cinder shards, and I don't think I have enough, so I explore the volcano again. I made it to the forge and I didn't find a single golden walnut, so I looked at my notes again to make absolutely sure that I was looking in the right place for the golden walnuts. And I was. Would I feel bad about paying 60,000 gold to the Joja Parrot? 
Yes, but I'm also really tired of spending time in the volcano looking for them. Since I still had to finish the Magma Sprite Monster Slayer goal, I decided to put off paying 60,000 gold, but if I finish the Monster Slayer goals before finding the remaining six, I think I'm just going to pay for the rest. I teleported back home early in the morning on day 187 since I don't have any food to go into the volcano today. The first Mystic Syrup is ready on the farm, so I toss it into the shipping bin, and all I need is the oil, garlic, and a few fruits from the trees to complete the shipping list. I watched a cutscene with Harvey who was participating in the aerobics class at Pierre's store, and I forgot to purchase more starfruit seeds today for the greenhouse. I visited Ginger Island and brought the TV with me this time to check on Lux, then I visited the volcano. By 10pm, I still didn't find any, so I left and went back to bed. Got the full shipment achievement plus the steam achievement when waking up on day 189, grabbed the three galaxy souls and headed to the volcano to gather more cinder shards, found one golden walnut from a crate and reached the forge to craft the infinity blade, also got the infinite power steam achievement. As you can probably already guess, I've never had an infinity weapon, so this is pretty cool. Then went home to cry about not finding more golden walnuts. Day 190 is a really productive day as we're quickly reaching the end of my 200 day challenge run to perfection and I still have so much to do. I did my chores and I got a small, normal quality egg for my chickens. I looked through the furniture catalog I bought from Pierre a few weeks ago, then I got overwhelmed and I gave up, so I didn't actually end up decorating at all. I wish there were an indoor editing mode that paused time because I get this feeling that decorating is actually going to take quite a bit of time, especially since I'm not familiar with all the catalog items and there's still much, so much left to do with only 10 days left. Afterwards, I hitched a ride to Calico Desert to look for cactus fruit and gave Sandy a gift while I was there. I asked Clint to open a few golden mystery boxes for me and I got a new sword. It really looks cool, but it's only level 6, so maybe we'll use it for glamming sometime. I got a cutscene with Emily. This time, she tells me she has a new hobby and tells me to sit back and relax. Then she dances and makes worms appear on my screen. Afterwards, she says, don't tell anyone about the dance. It was for your eyes only. What? I gave her the bouquet, but honestly, I feel really, really bad about it. I think if she were someone in real life, I would probably run away and never talk to them ever again. I spy Harvey chilling by the river and he also gets a bouquet and he's not weird about it at all. Alex, Mario, Sebastian, and Sam still need bouquets, so I have a lot of work to do since I've mostly ignored them in this playthrough. Later that evening, I stare at the chest on my farm and think of a productive way to spend my time. Then it occurs to me, I could craft an obelisk. I've been saving up for them, so I might as well, right? I have the materials for the Earth Obelisk, which is only 500,000 gold, and the Island Obelisk for Ginger Island is a hefty 1 million gold. Out of all the obelisks, the Island Obelisk is probably the most useful, since I still have to visit the volcano and I'm still working on key gem quests. I'm glad I brought the materials with me because I didn't know if I would need them since this is my first time making any Thing from the wizard's hut. I hesitate at first because it is a lot of money to spend all at once. The obelisk is surprisingly small, only six tiles, and it fits perfectly between the greenhouse and the chicken coop. Before visiting the wizard, I cleared the area out beside Grandpa's shrine, but since this is closer, I decided to leave it in a more convenient spot. I leave the wizard's hut with much, much lighter pockets, and I'm curious to see what the perfection percentage is at now. I check the mail the next morning, and Kent sent me a recipe for super meal. That's one more gifted recipe to mark off the list. After finishing chores, I took a gift to Sandy, and I had no idea she sold cactus fruit. I buy tin to have enough to craft the desert obelisk, and I feel so, so stupid. I genuinely had no idea she sold these, and I've been visiting Cal desert for the last several weeks gathering them for the desert obelisk. I feel so stupid. As I'm heading into town to hand out gifts, I watch as Sam nearly runs into Mary Lewis with a skateboard. The youths. Hilarious. Talk to Vincent and he tells me Jas likes fairy box. I actually did a double take because I thought he said fairy rose at first. The heck is a fairy box? I look it up on the wiki and it's a new trinket. When visiting Krobus, I purchased the wizard catalog since there's only nine days left in this challenge and I know I won't be able to afford all of the obelisks anyway. Back on Cowboy Farm, I tried decorating with it, but I get annoyed about the TV that's sitting in the middle of my room. Made 117,000 gold overnight, so I feel a little bit better about buying the wizard catalog for 150,000 gold. Day 192 is another super good luck day and I originally planned to visit the volcano mines but I did a bunch of chores and decorated instead. When I visited Robin I noticed I could add additional rooms and I was pretty shocked to see the dining room was 150,000 gold. That's crazy. The damn furniture catalog is 200,000 gold. At this point, I'm just blowing through my money because why not? I visit the Mjolnirs and gave George's birthday gift. 
I wish you could walk too, George. I watched a cutscene with Haley that I've never seen before. I was clicking too fast through the dialogue options and I accidentally clicked something that made her mad at me. She gets mad at me when I ask if we can decorate. I talked to her after she kicked me out of the room and she's really mad at me. Wow. Like, yikes. She's so mad at me. I found another clam at the beach and gave a bouquet to Leah on the way back home. I thought about building the obelisk to the mountains with the iridium bars and the earth crystals, but since it's still a lot of money and I actually need more money to purchase starfruit seeds soon, I decided to wait. I finally got sick and tired of the TV in the middle of my living room floor, so I brought it with me to Ginger Island. I used my fancy new island obelisk for the first time to visit the volcano, and it feels really really nice not walking all the way to Willie's boat. Like this is hilariously convenient. I ran through the volcano mines without much of an issue and I defeated as many magma sprites as I could find along the way. I of course didn't find any golden walnuts though, and I passed out right in front of my beach house. Honestly, why am I still wasting my time? Regardless, on day 194, I picked myself back up and gave the volcano another try. I found one more golden walnut from a crate on floor 9, and I keep finding them right before the forge room, so I'm wondering if I should just farm this room over and over again. Reaching this floor is a lot easier now that I have the Infinity Blade, but it still takes most of the day to get here. I conveniently warped back home and harvested more wine from kegs today, and I didn't have enough fruit to replenish them all, which didn't feel very good. I thought the Spirit Ease Festival was today, and I missed it, and I panicked. It's tomorrow. Crisis averted, don't worry. I love that I can see the fortune teller on this giant ass screen now. The Spirits Eve Festival on year 2 is awesome. Look at these spider webs. I like how Sam and Vincent make it past Sebastian. Sam made me scream though, like what is that makeup that genuinely scared me. I got a prize ticket for making it through the maze and the maze was really fun this year. I hope every year is a little bit different. I've never played past year 2. I don't actually think I've seen this festival on year 2 before. The full moon tonight really set the vibes too. Day 196 is the last day of the season and only 4 days left in my 200 day challenge. Even though it's the last day of the season, it's a pretty normal day without a whole lot of excitement aside from Emily's fashion show at the mayor's house. It's all fun and games until my wife shows up and leaves in a full suit of armor. I honestly like that Ape threw in another bone for Clint then he snatched it away again. Poor Clint. I actually kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, he really just needs to use his words. This might actually be the best cutscene in the entire game. I just wish I had a turn to walk into the booth. I finally got the cow decal from the ticket booth and caught the prismatic butterfly at the beach earning a measly 17,000 gold. Decided to finally build the earth obelisk because why not and I definitely plan on building the Junimo hut soon after I move the barn and place more iridium splinkers in the fields. My baby boy was delivered on the very last day of autumn. Halloween babies are pretty cool and I named him Edgar after my favorite poet, not Elliot. Abigail has special dialogue in the morning which is really fun and it's the very first day of winter so everything in the fields is now dead. The pigs no longer give truffle for truffle oil so that's a large chunk of money I no longer have access to this season either. After chores, I try my luck at the volcano again and I completed the monster slayer goal at 9pm and got the protector of the valley steam achievement. I have 38 out of 49 achievements on steam now. Nice. I grabbed the extended family quest again, boring, but I didn't feel like Junimo Kart. I checked the perfection percentage again after completing the monster slayer goals and I'm at 69% completion now. Afterwards, I entered the beach house and then I have an idea right before before I go to bed. It's been bothering me for a while now, but this is the first time I've tried to reach perfection in Stardew and find all of the golden walnuts in the process. And I think I've done a decent job, but the last few have just been so grueling. I'm really curious what people will think about me purchasing the last four golden walnuts without finding them myself in the volcano chests and crates. Will you judge me? Sure, I have all winter to look for them, but I'd like to spend time doing other things like befriending the villagers, fixing up the farm, and completing key quests. I stared at the screen for more than 20 minutes trying to make this decision. Inevitably, I have had a lot of fun finding most of them, but burning through the mines just to open chests and crates, hoping they'll drop, has been really tedious, and there have been a lot of days where I don't find any at all. So I think I'm ready to hand over 40,000 gold to Joja. I wake up on day 198 feeling pretty gross after watching that cutscene with Morris. Maybe that will cover his medical bills after getting punched in the face though. No take backsies. Checked the walnut room and went from 69% completion to 70% which makes my decision feel a little bit worse. Honestly forgot I had completed mastery in every skill so I visited the mastery door about a week later than I should have and I collected the last mastery. Combat, which means the trinket slot for the fairy box is now open too. When you unlock all five, there's a notification that says, You feel grandpa's hand patting your shoulder, and look at his little spectral hat. I love this. Gave Alex the fried egg I made this morning, and immediately after, he blushed and told me to tell Haley hi. Yikes. 
finished the day hanging out with Sebastian while trying to catch the Legend 2 without any luck at all. Day 199 was a good luck day, so I completed a few morning chores and took my silver pan to Clint to upgrade to gold and started passing out more gifts. Even though it was a good luck day, I couldn't get the crimson fish on the line so I said fuck it and visited Robin to look at the home renovations. I really wanted to splurge on all of these, but I decided not to and choose only the cubby renovation, then I went home to finish the chores that I hadn't gotten to yet. After chores, I looked at my relationship panel and decided to hand out a few more gifts. One of my goals was to reach Max's relationship with everyone in Pelican Town, and we won't meet that goal in the 200 days, but I got really, really close. I also saw an opossum in Cinder's that forest before going home. On the last day of the 200 challenge, I finished what I promised I would do. I started decorating my ugly ass farm. I'm actually really sorry it took so long to get to this point. I just find decorating in Stardew so overwhelming, especially since there's so much space to take up. And since I don't have the golden clock, everything grows back, which I find super tedious, so I just procrastinated all of it. I crafted a few quality and iridium sprinklers and started filling up the empty space near the mushroom cave. One thing I don't like about the Meadowlands farm is how the tillable and untillable tiles are laid out. It makes it annoying to figure out where to place sprinklers to get the most use out of them and they're not all concentrated in one spot. To get the most use out of the sprinklers, your crop fields have to be split up in different areas, and that space has to be shared with animals since grass grows on the tillable tiles. But I think what I've done here is a good start as any. Also, while decorating, it occurred to me, you know what I should have done that's been so obvious this entire time? Planted starfruit at Ginger Island. There are so many little things like this that I'm learning along the way that I'm sure so many people watching this video have figured out already after their first Perfection playthrough. And that's one of the things I really love about this game. For Perfection Seekers like like myself, it's all about perfecting your gameplay and mapping out the best use of your time with how to get there. I'm actually looking forward to doing this again and looking back on these videos. Before I get too ahead of myself, let's look at the goals I initially set for myself and do a small recap of what I've accomplished in these 100 days. So I reached 72% completion in 200 days, but how many of my goals did I actually accomplish? Let's take a look. I did not reach maximum friendship with every villager, but I got really close. 13 out of 34 left, not including my kids. I reached floor 106 in the Skull Caverns. I'd like to get even further someday. I shipped everything on the shipping list and I even got the Steam achievement, but I did not craft or cook everything. Crafting is at 42% while cooking is at 35% completed. Additionally, I missed the pink cake and maple bar recipes from Karina Sauce in summer, which means I have to spend 50,000 gold on the cookbook at the bookseller or wait until summer next year for the TV channels, I think. I entered the walnut room on day 117 and gathered several items for Mr. Key's gems that I've never seen before. I also found all of the golden walnuts, 126 I found on my own, then I paid the Jojo Parrot to find the last four remaining in the normal rare chests and crates in the volcano. I opened the mastery room door and reached maximum mastery. If I were to do another perfection run, I would unlock these in a different order. I finished all of the Monster Slayer goals and got the Protector of the Valley Steam Achievement. I finished the museum and collected the last star drop and I got the Steam Achievement for that too. Finished the missing bundle as well and unlocked the theater. I also got the two thumbs up Steam Achievement for watching a movie at the theater. The last goal I set for myself was to decorate my farm and as silly as this one is, I consider it a success. I bought several catalogs and did more decorating than I've ever done in any save file. Now I know it could be better, but for me, it's at least a start. Here are a few extras that I feel like are worth mentioning as well. I reached the bottom of the dangerous mines and got the steam achievement, as well as getting the most powerful weapon in the game, the infinity blade. I got the steam achievement for that as well. Got the ostrich, which was super fun. Built two out of four obelisks on my farm. Lastly, I did not upgrade all of my tools. The watering can, hoe, pan, and ax are currently all gold quality. It feels so good to see so many tabs filled out in my save file, and I know there's still so much more left to do. Since I'm so close to perfection, I'd love to continue this to see how long it actually takes to reach perfection for the first time. If that is something you'd be interested in watching, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my 200 day video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.